make changes to the DAO. This is where things start becoming dynamic. We create new nodes and add them to the DAO document. We change the text content, replace the older nodes with the new one, and sometimes we totally remove the nodes. So these are the changes we usually make to the DAO. And the changes result in a way that our page become dynamic. So this lecture is all about making changes to the DAO by creating new nodes, by changing the text content, by adding new nodes and replacing the old ones, and by totally removing the nodes. So let's learn to do that and see how do we create new nodes. In order to create new nodes, we have two different methods. Create element creates an element node like paragraph element or the div element, etc. Right? The second method is create text node. This method simply creates a text node that you can assign to any element. So these are the two methods we usually use to create new nodes. The create element method gets used a lot because it generates the HTML. However, the create text node method is rarely used because to create a text node or to change the text content of a node, we have some properties which are very convenient to use and call. So instead of using the method create text node in order to create a text node, we usually prefer to use the properties. But we aren't going to ignore this method. We will code it and study it. Let's just start with the create element method. This method creates a new element, a brand new element, like the paragraph, div, ul, li, script, etc. So using the DOM, you can create new HTML. So let's say I want to create a new paragraph element. So I will call the method in a way like this. And the type of the element I want to create is paragraph. So this line of code is going to create an empty paragraph element just like this. In addition to the paragraph, I also want to create a li element. So I will code something like this. And now the tag name is li. So an empty li is created by this line of code. So let's print both the variable in the cancel and see what do we get there. In the cancel, you can see we have successfully created two new elements, but they're empty. There is no text node inside. So without text, they're not very useful. And how do we add text to them? I will show you soon. Just follow along. So create element creates an empty HTML element. Let's now study create text node. Create text node method creates a standalone text node. For example, So we pass the text to the method and it returns a text node. So it's a standalone text node that does not belong to any element. So let's see what do we get in the cancel. Now you can see a text node, a standalone text node is created. Now here you see, we have an empty element and here we have the text for the element. So this text I wanna put in the paragraph so that it becomes useful and for that, we need to use the properties which are used to change the text content of a node. So what are those properties? Let's check them out. In the DOM, we have three such properties. So let's me write them down. So these are the properties we have to change the text content of a node. And most of the time, properties are two-dimensional. That means they can read as well as write the content. So these properties are also two-dimensional. They can read as well as write. In addition, these properties can also be used to create a text node. So instead of using create text node method to just create a standalone text node, we can use these properties for creating a text node as well as changing the text content of the node. So these are the important properties and you're gonna work a lot with them when it comes to the text manipulation. Let's now look closer to these properties. All of them work with the text content, but there are some key differences between them, especially the value they return. So what are the key differences? Let me tell you, and this thing is also important to understand. 
because these properties can make you confused by giving the impression like we are the same but that is not true they are not same they have their key differences the first property is the text content text content is used to read and write the text of a node in plain format plain text means non rendered text like no css styling and if the text contain other html tags this property is gonna ignore all the tags and will only return the text content of those tags another thing that you need to remember here is that this property is gonna return the text content of all its children so that was the text content the second property is the inner text this one is used to grab the rendered text content of a node Right, so using these properties, you can grab the CSS attributes. You can grab the CSS styles. Now, the third one is the inner HTML property. The inner HTML returns the text content, non-rendered text content of a node, as well as HTML tags of the node. So if the text contains HTML tags, you will get those tags also. For example, if I apply inner HTML to the list, so I will get the text content as well as these li tags right so that was the difference between these properties let's now try to code them and have some fun so here we have a paragraph which is empty and i'm going to put some text in it so to the paragraph i will simply call the text content property and now i will put some text and now i will print the paragraph again in the cancel so let's refresh the page and here you can see a paragraph with the text now this paragraph has become useful and can be added to the DOM document and the property did two different things created a text node and changed the text content of the node that means we actually don't need to use this create text node method like i said earlier the same result you're going to get from the inner text if i call inner text refresh the page and you will see the same result and the inner html will also give you the same result and here you see the same output right so all the three properties showing you the same result so here you got the impression like these properties are the same but they are not they have their differences and we have talked about it so to show you the differences between these properties we need to do some more experiments with them so let's continue and now you will see the key differences between the properties so like I said earlier, a property can be used to read in the right. And here we are using the property for writing. Reading means use the property to get the text content. And here you will see the differences. When we use the properties to read the text content, then they show their differences. Now I want to read the text content of the UL list. So I need to select the UL element first. So here we have the UL element. Now let's see what happens when I apply the text content property to the UL. So using the property, we are trying to read the text content of the UL. Refresh the page, and here you see the text from all the children nodes, including new lines and the wide spaces. Here you see a new line, here we have a new line, new line, new line, and here we have wide spaces. And you know wide spaces are preserved in the DAM document as text nodes. So when you try to retrieve all the text nodes, you will simply get all of them, the original text as well as wide spaces. In the console, I can even show you what do we have uh, inside the text. Now you can see what is actually returned by the property. The first node is the new line and a wide space that we have in the HTML document. And here you see, here we have a new line and then here we have the wide space. And after that, we have the text and again, a new line and a wide space text new line in the wide space text new line and that's it so the output here is the same new line wide space text new line wide space text so remember this thing when you use the text content property to retrieve the text from all the children nodes you also get the wide spaces and wide spaces are also text nodes but practically we don't always use the text content property to retrieve the text from all the children nodes. We simply apply it to any specific node and get the result. For example, if I want to get the text from the first li, so I can use the text content in a more specific manner. For example, we are going to target the first element and text 
matrix content right so the first element child of ul is this one and then we apply text content which is gonna return only this text due laundry so this is a more practical use of text content property and if you refresh the page you will see the result right due laundry and inside the li there is no extra wide space or the new line so that was the text content let's now apply the inner text to the ul and see what do we get there let me refresh the page now you see a much better result the inner text property gonna give you just the text content of the children notes other notes are totally ignored so this one can be a better choice if you want to retrieve the text from all the children notes right and when you apply inner text to any specific node for example the first ally so you will get the same result as before this text do library now the last one is inner html and this one is special inner html will give you the text nodes as well as the html tags so let me apply the inner html on the ul and now you will see the difference now you got everything all the text nodes including the wide spaces and the elements and when you apply inner html to a single element to get its text you get the text so if i run the inner html to the li it will return the text due laundry but if the text further contains any html element that will also be returned so let's say if i apply inner html to the first element of the ul and you can see the same output as before so now you have experienced by yourself these properties are confusing even though i showed you the differences but still there may be some confusions like when to use them and how to use them so let me give you a usage guideline before we move on and i want you to remember what i am just about to tell you so here comes everything in a nutshell we have these three properties in order to change the text content of the node these properties can write the text content as well as read the text content so when you are trying to write the text content like here then you can use any one of them however text content is preferable and when you just try to read the text content only the text content of a single node just like we did here then you will go for the text content or the inner text and when you want to read the text content of a single node as well as the html tags inside the text then you will go for the inner html it will give you the text content as well as the html included in the text so let me just show you what do i mean let's say this is the text i want to read using the property inner html and this text doesn't contain any other html but there are some cases where the text contains html for example so here you see i put a strong tag in the text so now when i use the inner html to this li i will get this whole text including the strong tags the text content and the inner text gonna ignore the strong tag so that is a usage guideline to write or read the text content of a single node in case of multiple nodes where you want to try to read the text content of all the children then you need to choose a property according to your requirement because they return different values so that was all about the properties we have to change the text content of a node so now we know two things how to create a node and how to change the text content of a node and when we combine these two we get a functional a useful node just like we created a paragraph here and then fill the paragraph with the text so let's now move on now after creating a node we need to make it visible on the front end of our website for example this paragraph node is created but it is not visible on the website to make a newly created node visible on the website we need to add it to the dom document or use it to replace the older nodes so let's now see how do we add a new node to the dom document to make it visible or replace the older ones with the new ones so let's start with adding a new node to add a new node to the dom tree we have two methods we have a pen child and insert before so these are the two methods we use to add the nodes to the dom document and they become visible so let's have some fun with these two methods and we are going to use this to list html 
and here we have three list items and we are going to add another to do list item via javascript and the first step here should be to create a new li element because li defines the to do and now we know how to create an element So now we have created an empty li and using the text content we are gonna put some text in it so now our new node is ready to add to the dom document and we are going to add it as a child to the ul and we have already selected the ul earlier so here we have the variable we can use so to the ul i will call append child and we pass our new node to the method that's it so this append child method gonna add this new node as the last node let me refresh the page and now you will see the node on the web you can see we have successfully created a new node and added it to the time document so that was append child method create a new node and use the method to add the node to the DOM document now the second one is insert before and this one is going to add a new node before a specified node so using this method you can simply choose where to add the node and this method uh, take two argument the first argument is a new node that we want to add and the second argument is next sibling so the new node is going to show itself before the next sibling now let's say i have a task with higher priority and I want to put it at the top of the list. For example, paying the bill is the priority task and I want to put it at the top. So this can easily be done using the method instead before. So let's create a new uh, to do priority to do. Uh, I can call it new priority. This to do I'm going to add to the top of the list using the method insert before. The first argument is the new to do. The second argument is the next sibling. And the next sibling is going to be the first ally because we are going to add our new node before the do laundry. And do laundry is a first child or will become the next sibling of this new node. And to target the first sibling, we can simply call the first element child property to the parent that's it now our new node is going to show itself at the top of the list so let me refresh the page and here you see the pay bills at the top right so the method append child and insert before are used to add new nodes to the DOM document in addition we also have a replace method that can be used to replace a node and the method is called replace child it takes two arguments new node and old node right so the old node is going to be replaced by the new node now let's say i want to replace the list item have walk with the dog with feed the dog so we need a new list item So here we have a new node with the text feed the dog and this one is going to replace the node have walk with the dog so to the ul we are going to first call uh, the replace child method the first argument is the new node the second argument is the replacing node which is the third node or the third child of the ul so using the index we are targeting the third child so what will happen when i refresh the page i think this one is gonna replace by the new node because we have already added a new node pay bills earlier and that means the node have walk with the dog got the index value three and in the code we are trying to replace the node with index value two so this is the node so we can change the index value so instead of the third child we are gonna replace the fourth child now let me refresh the page and i will see the output right the node is replaced by the new one 
So that was the replace child method, simple and easy to use. So now we have covered create new nodes, change the text content and add or replace the nodes. The last point is the removing nodes and it's the last concept that you need to learn in order to make changes to the DOM. So let's say how do we remove nodes. So to remove a node, we have two different methods. So let's check them out one by one. The method number one is remove child and that can be used to remove a child from the parent node. For example, I want to remove the first child of the UL, which is a parent. So to the UL, I'm going to call remove child method and to the method I will pass the child node I want to remove. First element child. That's it. The first child is removed. So the pay bills is the first child. And as I refresh the page, this one is gone. And here I say. So that was quite simple. And the second method is remove. Remove method is different from the remove child. The remove child, as the name suggests, can only be called to the parent node. But the remove method can be called in any node. A node even called the remove method and get itself removed. For example, I want to remove the last node of the UL. So to the last node, I can call the remove method, just like that. So as we refresh the page, you will see the last node is gone. And here we say, so that was simple. And let's say if we apply remove directly to the UL, the entire UL gonna remove itself. So refresh and everything is gone, right? There is no UL in the DOM document, as you can see here. So my dear listeners, that was a lecture, a comprehensive lecture on make changes to the DOM. And we covered all the options that we have to change the DOM. Now you can go further to the next lecture. In the next lecture, you will learn how to work with the attributes, how to add, remove and modify attributes.